Well, folks, it's time for another AMA with Hearthstone developer Ixar. And in this one, he's going to field some questions on uh, Halo and Hearthstone, <laughs> uh, buffs to wild cards and early rotations. Not sure the answers are going to be what you want to hear, but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, we'll take a look. Uh, so first question, Halo expansion on the table now, of course, referring to uh, Microsoft's announcement that it is buying Activision Blizzard King. And uh, Ixer says, you know what? At some point when the deal is done, we're going to sit around talking about what IP is under our roof, and he's going to put Halo near the top of that list to request. He wants a Master Chief hero in Battlegrounds. And, you know, we memed about this. <laughs> like, I memed in the thumbnail for the announcement. And here we go. Perhaps an actual possibility. Of course, still a long way away. Lots of meetings and loopholes to get through, too, I guess, or... or um red tape to get through for this one but it's not impossible i guess diablo made his way in so is master chief the next evolution <laughs> combat evolved i guess and in regards to microsoft here's a question about how that might change hearthstone specifically ixar replies he's happy to be a part of the microsoft organization there's a ton of talent they might be able to more easily communicate with and access as far as how it plays out, nobody at Blizzard, at his level at least, is aware how things are going to work or if they'll even really be Activision Blizzard King or if it's going to get reshuffled around and studios will get split apart and who knows how things are going to shake out when all is said and done. Uh, but ultimately, coming away with a teaspoon of optimism, which I think is rare at Blizzard these days. <laughs> There's been so much bad news and, and uh, horrific stuff lately that... Uh, people looking forward to the future and having some hopes for the organizational structure is definitely a good thing. I think that could have positive impact on uh, development too. Just people who are happier probably make cooler stuff very often. All right, so here's a question about Dustgate. <laughs> Love the name. Any any controversy, we had gate to it, and it's it's here. I was actually a little unplugged for Dustgate. I was like working on the duels reveal and the duels interview while all this was unfolding. I tried to get a catch up on stream. Um, I, to recap, some dust was awarded, dust was taken away, people are mad. I don't really know the details still beyond that, but it sounds messy, and like Hat puts it here, it sounds like a bummer. Like, I think everybody came away from this one feeling worse. <laughs> like, Blizzard had a bad time, players had a bad time, it just feels bad moments all around. It just sucked, and um, it's unfortunate. If you need more details on that, I think, like, Zeddy had a good video recapping it uh, with better details from what i heard uh so i guess the question is here um how are hiccups like that responded to internally for design and overall at any level you interact with can you speak to what happened solutions precautions etc xr wasn't involved at all in this not even through email acquired my info from talking to some people that were it obviously sucks the end result is that we donated a very large sum of money's worth of dust for players to be angry with us not ideal so, um, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> like, uh, you know, both, uh, bad PR and kind of opportunity cost of dust, uh, as well. I would, you know, there's, there's some framing here where it's like, you know, a, a large sum of money's worth of dust, right? Like that framing is part of the disconnect, I think, between Blizzard and the player base, and part of the reason people are so frustrated is that Blizzard sees dust as money, because, like, hey, if we give you a thousand dust, you're not going to spend money to buy packs or spend your gold to buy packs, and this dust is worth money to us, whereas players on the other side look at it and say, hey, this dust is free, you guys can just print dust, and for many players to say, look, I wasn't going to buy packs anyway or spend my gold on that dust. That was a bonus. I just crafted some fun card. So for players, they're not really seeing it as an expense incurred at the hands of Blizzard, whereas Blizzard is weighing it as an expense incurred. So for all the players out there, and for me too, really, I'd say like, hey, Blizzard, just give people a thousand dust or two thousand dust or whatever. Um, you know, they're usually not going to use that to change their spending habits or their gold habits. It's probably just for fun. It's some goodwill. It's some positive PR. Whereas Blizzard is saying like, man, the opportunity cost of this dust is so many millions of dollars across this many players. And that's the disconnect. So Blizzard's trying to protect that value. Players are just wanting to have fun and be happy. And I I'm certainly going to lean on the side of the players there. Like, 
I agree. Get some goodwill. I think Kibler had a really good tweet about this as well. I should probably pull it up, but I, I don't know how to find it that quickly. <laughs> Kibler tweets a lot, so I'd have to scroll for a bit. But he had a great thought about it too, uh, essentially saying it seems like a win for Blizzard to just like tank that hit. But again, it comes down to that like cost equation, and it's really like here, right? Seeing the dust as monetary value versus not. Anyway, uh, feel free to, to debate the the complexities of that in the comments. There are certainly two reasonable perspectives to take, uh, one on each side. Uh, XR goes on to say, bugs happen though, it won't be the last grippy run that has a problem. We didn't uncover fast enough. We're making tens of thousands of code changes on a team with hundreds of people. You see the things that go wrong, none of the things that go well. It's okay to be unhappy though. I understand we aren't happy with it either. We'd obviously rather not have had anything go wrong to give a dust refund in the first place. So the other day, I mean, I think this is a reasonable take, like acknowledging it sucks, acknowledging everybody's coming away from it happy. I think people are still waiting for a sort of resolution or follow up or some sort of amends to be made. I'm going to leave that to you guys to sort out. I, I'm in the same boat. Like it sucks. I think Blizzard should err on the side of goodwill as opposed to protecting sort of it's not it's not made up value like it exists. But, you know, this this sort of opportunity cost value protecting that. I don't know. They have calculations. They can see data that I can't see. So it feels silly to say that it's it's mistaken to value that. But it, it feels like the the bad PR is a cost that is greater. Losing players might be a cost that is greater. To me, it feels like that equation is a little out of whack. So this is a tough one, but indeed just sucks. All right, so next up here's a question about uh, any buffs for wild format, specifically in regards to Lightforge Crusader. Right now, it's essentially seven mana do nothing. I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, I, functionally, I guess maybe they're saying it's too slow. It's actually working, right? Maybe there's some nuance here. I don't actually totally understand. But anyway, the response is uh, we don't have any plans to buff cards as they rotate to wild to make them competitive in wild. And I, I, I think that's reasonable. Uh, you know, keeping cards as they were designed makes sense. It feels, you know, like there's some continuity there. I do think it's somewhat unfortunate that that most cards you get in Hearthstone and you own don't actually ever really do anything. They're not great in standard, then they're not going to be great in wild in most cases. So like 80% of your collection's kind of pointless, which makes owning cards feel sort of bad. I don't think this would necessarily be the way to fix that. I think like more modes or, or limited rotations, those sorts of things could be a better way to encourage play for underplayed cards because if you buff cards to make them playable you end up with the same problems there's a best deck or a best few decks those get played a lot anything else is suddenly not played you might take cards that are currently good and make those unplayable compared to the thing you just buffed it's really hard to get a perfectly flat system where everything is kind of playable so you know picking cards here and there doesn't really help solve this problem so i think that's a totally reasonable philosophy if indeed still just a little sad Here's a question about uh, maybe changing rotations for specific cards uh, to open up design space. So maybe there's like some super strong card. It could like rotate after a single meta or expansion, right? As opposed to having the normal scheduled rotations. Ixar says they'd rather not create one-off special rules. People have to remember we did it with Baku and Gin and will if necessary. Just not something they're looking to surprise people with. Surprise your favorite thing rotated early. Uh, but as long as that clause there is like, we'll do it if necessary, if lo as long as that exists, I'm cool with it. Because Baku and Gin were definitely cards that needed to rotate early. And I'm sure we'll have some in the future. Uh, some people think quest lines should, in fact, do that. I don't think we're currently in that state at the moment. But uh, if you think quest lines should rotate early like Baku and Gin, share your thoughts. I'm curious to read them. All right. So this next one's a little dense. Four questions in one here. What are the prospects of, number one, seeing our ladder MMR? Uh, XR says low to medium prospects. Apparently, it thinks it's a little bit confusing in a negative way. And the reason it's happening in duels and battlegrounds isn't necessarily out of desire so much. It's just kind of like that was what they had and could feasibly achieve. Um, I'm cool with the rank system as is. I don't think we need to see that much granularity personally, but having it as an option is always a bonus, right? Can't, can't complain there. Uh, number two, having in-game tournament mode for Conquest, last year standing, or qualifiers. The prospects for number two is on the table. Yay for tournament mode. We have a features group currently brainstorming new features we'd like to add in 2022. Surprised that that would be features added this year, not like in 2023, but hey, faster the better. 
Likely to happen, just not soon. How it's connected with esports is hard to say. Number three, the prospects of a global server so we don't have to maintain separate collections close to zero would require such a uh, large change in how collections work that I don't know the time will ever be worth the effort. It surprises me personally, but I certainly don't know behind the scenes. Uh, number four, what are the prospects of setting a pre-order price for a full expansion collection also close to zero? More concerned with decreasing spend on players who struggle to have enough resources to have fun to get your first four or five decks. I mean, that is certainly a noble goal. I don't know that it's mutually exclusive, <laughs> but um, I, I, I could agree with that. It, and I think the, the kind of takeaway for me there, at least my interpretation is, you know, sometimes we need the whales to subsidize the free to play players and having the kind of loot box gotcha pack system of Hearthstone that we've had forever and have been a part of CCGs forever. Even though I personally, as we just think they suck, um, it, it does make sense economically for, for Blizzard to need those whales to subsidize free to play players as a free to play game. So uh, I'm not a fan of it. I would rather just see set prices like we get for mini sets. That's awesome. Everybody feels good about those purchases. I feel like that would have longer term benefits, but uh, as long as that is actually achieved, and people get into the game more easily, get their first four or five decks. I could live with the uh, the whale subsidization. All right, for Battlegrounds, is Tyrion coming back? Definitely considering bringing Tyrion back, especially with a character like Tyrion. He's prominent, Warcraft character, art, hero power, all that's done, only in everyone's best interest to find a way to get him back in. And I definitely don't think Tyrion would be too OP these days like he was when he first hit Battlegrounds. So uh, I remember actually way back, way back when we... Uh, tested battlegrounds before release like they invited a bunch of us streamers out to test battlegrounds and uh i think it was frodan who said like hey you guys need to get some more recognizable characters in here where's Tyrion?" and they were like you know what we'll we'll put Tyrion in and <laughs> they worked on Tyrion because they wanted him in there because he's you know well-known character classic warcrafted hearthstone character and then he was broken but now it sounds like he might be able to come back which is pretty cool and I think for our last question here, it's one about arena and uh, how to improve the arena game mode and uh, a lot to break down here. I'm probably not going to do it justice, so I'll try to leave this on screen for you to read in great detail at your own leisure. But um, essentially, Ixar agrees there's some cool opportunity with arena, likes the gameplay, has low friction. In other words, you don't have to have a collection or a bunch of game knowledge. You kind of just hop in. It shows you the cards you pick and you're moving, which I, I agree with. Arena has a really cool model. It's just got that high entry fee, costs a lot of gold to get into, which is tough, and it's not match made is the other acknowledged problem here. What that means is uh, you play based on your wins in a run. You do not play based on your MMR. So what happens is bad players lose and they lose often because even if they get a decent run going where they manage to queue up into other bad players, eventually they're going to self-select into the good players and then get stomped. So... In match-made systems, what happens is that all evens out and bad players play other bad players and bad players can still get to 12 wins because they're just playing other players of their skill level. That never happens in a non-match-made system like Arena because they eventually just start playing people way better than them and get crushed over and over again, which means they leave the Arena ecosystem because who wants to play and lose all the time, which means the good players are left playing only against other good players and there's a new batch of worst players who again get ground out of the system, thereby constantly, uh, you know, weeding out the player base sort of by the process of arena. Now duels has some matchmaking built in so that doesn't happen as much. You have the MMR system. So uh, you're still being selected for to some extent. We don't know exactly how much, but based on skill, not just based on the success of a given run. So couple fixed possibilities, right? Uh, no systematic updates, just, you know, gameplay card updates, that sort of stuff. Keep the small player base happy and, and thriving for, for what it is, or alternatively major overhaul, takeaway entry system, um, change reward structure to match the lack of a, of an entry system and change matchmaking so that new players or existing weak players can still have a fun experience. Uh, I don't know which is better. He acknowledges upsides and downsides of both. I, I don't play a lot of arena, so I'm not the right person to speak on this or, or offer suggestions. Curious to hear what all of you think though about this arena world. And that's that. I think that wraps it up for this AMA recap. Uh, not a lot of questions, but a lot of discussion. So Hopefully you still enjoyed this one. There were a few others I didn't quite get to, so I'll drop a link as always in the description if you want to read the rest of uh, these AMA takes. That's it. Thanks so much as always for watching, and until next time, game on.